So this is the current state of my wallpaper in my bedroom where I have the actual bed and as you can see I had to actually rip off some parts that are all the way down here because the cats had been scratching on that wallpaper. It was during a time when they were very restless and bored and they needed a lot of activity so I made sure that I got some stuff for them and some toys and other tools and materials so they wouldn't be as restless anymore. And now they are actually starting to calm down so they aren't scratching the walls as much as before but still it left the wall with all of these scratches and damaged parts that were unsolvable. But another thing is that I have actually been thinking about for a while to do some changes about this wall because I guess I bought this wallpaper during the time when I was into that kind of farmhouse style and this looked like those kind of old weathered looking wood and I, I guess I want to have the illusion that it actually is wood but I want to have it more in a deeper tone. But I'm thinking about doing some kind of textured effect, having some kind of gradient but still giving the entire wall a darker tone that it looks like it's a solid color from the floor up here and then it starts to sh blend into more of these wooden details so you're going to see some of these wood textures and all that so maybe i will go over with sort of a wash all over this wall to deepen the tone of all of the wooden pieces and since it's a little bit difficult to remove this part of the bed i'm just going to try and see if i can go in between the bed frame here and just paint those parts using a medium-sized brush or something because those areas aren't going to be that noticeable but I want to make sure that they at least have the same colors that I'm going to use on the other parts so it doesn't look like these parts are standing out because they are in a brighter completely different shade than the other parts. Yeah so that's all I wanted to mention and now I'm gonna start working on giving this wall a new makeover. So they decided to focus the majority of the wall filler on those jagged edges of the wallpaper where I just ripped off the majority that was so damaged that they were unsolvable to even try to patch up or fix or anything. And then to just make sure that there wasn't just a empty blank spot on the lower part of the wall, I added some more of the filler product just to add some interesting textures which are going to be more noticeable later on in the process. Since I didn't have that much left of the grayish brown matte wall paint that I used for my hallway, I decided to make my own custom mix using some of the graphite shock paint with some of this brick red wall paint that I had and mixed it in with the leftover grayish brown wall paint. This actually really worked because it looked pretty much like the same shade that it was previously. Before I am going to paint the wall, I'm going to go over with this white lacquer. That is the same lacquer that is used for the skirting boards. And this is just so I have a white base coat before I'm going over with any deeper tones or any brighter shades. That is a huge contrast to the white paint. Because this is going to lessen the risk that it's going to leak any of the brown paint onto the white skirting boards. And it was time to start painting all of these wooden panels and I put some of this wall paint in a separate container that I mixed with a lot of water so I would have more of a wash effect or maybe more of a stain effect to all of these wooden panels so it would slowly but surely deepen all of these wooden panels on the wallpaper so they would look like they have more of that kind of deep brown stained look. And thankfully, since I did a very watered down mix here, the paint would actually start to dry very quickly. So as soon as I went to the last panel, the first parts where I had added the paint mixture had already dried so I could go over with another layer. And I decided to go over with a total of three layers of this wall paint because I just wanted to make sure that I had a deeper tone that would be a nicer contrast to the bed frame, for example, so it wouldn't be too monotone and too much of these colors just blending in together. I wanted to have a nicer contrast and also a deeper tone and more of a cozy look to this bedroom wall. And also from time to time I'm looking at what the wall looked like before I started at the paint just to see the large contrast and actually the difference that it was from before and what it looks like now just to know that the wall is actually getting deeper and deeper in tone. 
and then to start building up a little bit of the effect of some depth and a little bit of a shadow effect i went over with a thicker consistency of the wall paint around all of the edges and corners and especially around the edges of the bed frame just to get the start of a nice shadow effect Alright, so I'm going to start working on the shadow effect now that is going to be in between each board here or each plank. I'm going to first see if I can use this one that is called graphite that is a very very dark grey. And I have actually done a mixture in a tiny glass jar here. Maybe one third water mixed into this so it's a little bit more runny. And the reason why I want this one to be a little bit runny is because I want to deepen these tones but still has sort of a transparency to it. Also it's going to enhance more of a deeper shadow in here. I'm planning to use this flat brush because I feel that one is going to be easier to use to enhance more that line shadow that I'm going to use here. If I still feel that this grey chalk paint mixture that I have here isn't good enough, then I have this black shock paint that is already diluted with a lot of water and I can use this one and go over those areas that I'm going to apply the grey shock paint. In case if this doesn't give me the effect I'm going for, then I can use the black one instead. So yeah, let's start painting and see if I can get this cool shadow effect. So to add this shadow effect, I'm going to use this flat brush that I showed before and if I felt like the consistency was a little bit too opaque, then I went over with a little bit more water. But you can see here that I'm not planning to add a very straight, even application with these lines. I want it to look like wooden planks or wooden panels are a little bit uneven, a little bit crooked, so it looks like the natural look of old wood that are worn and a little bit damaged. So I was pretty much expecting this to happen when it comes to the grey shark paint because instead of giving me this kind of shadow effect between each wooden panel, it looked very bright, especially when I had the studio lights on. And I wanted to make sure that even when I had the studio lights on, I wanted the result to look the way I wanted it. So I knew that even though no matter what kind of light source that I had, I had a result that I could be pleased with. So I decided to go over with that watered down mixture of the black shark paint that I had and decided to use a very thin flat brush to paint in between those lines that I have added the grey shock paint. From further away you're going to notice that this actually gives a very nice looking illusion that it is a space in between all of these wooden panels. But close up it's going to be not quite what I was going for because it left me with more of a cartoony look to the entire design that it had this black solid line in between these planks. Because even though this is a wash, having the grey shock paint underneath made the grey shock paint much deeper in tone and also enhanced the black line that was already on the wallpaper. So after I was done with that, I thought that hmm, maybe if I go over with those kind of highlight effects that I'm going for, maybe it's going to enhance more the illusion that these are shadows, so the grey shark point is going to look deeper in contrast with a highlight next to it. And I also had some struggle with the actual highlighting process because I thought at first that I wanted to make a mixture uh, with some warmer shades, so I mixed in some acrylics and all of that, but it didn't give me that kind of highlight I was going for. And then I made another mixture, tried that one, and that one was too thick, so I had to wipe that off and try to avoid wiping off too much, so none of the paint that was underneath those washes that I had made was going to be removed. So it was a little bit of a struggle when it comes to the highlighting process, and in the end I managed to create sort of a highlight, so it was a very, very thick thin down slightly one shade lighter than the shade that was already on the wall to give sort of the illusion of a highlighted effect. And even though with the highlights on I was still not happy. So I decided to go over the entire surface that I had applied this grey shopping using this black 
wash. And this gave me the result that I was going for. It looked so much better because it gave me more of that depth and contrast in between these wooden panels and enhanced the illusion. These were old looking wood panels that had an uneven finish to them or they are damaged over the years. They are a bit worn and have some tears on them. Having that natural warped look as if they have been exposed to dry heat or humidity, cold weather, warm weather. Like I said, the rustic effect, the, the imperfections that I was going for because that was going to enhance more the illusion of that kind of antique cottage core style that I'm going for. Then was time to add the final step of the actual wallpaper with some shadows. And I first went over with some of this thicker consistency of the wall paint that I used before. Then I used this wash of this black shark paint just to enhance more deeper shadows on all of the edges and corners. And I applied all of this black wash using a sponge. And you're going to notice the lower part where I had all of this damaged pieces of the wallpaper that I added the filler party to. I'm going to add some of these textured effects with the sponge. So I'm just dabbing it on top of the surface just to enhance more of those textures. And after the shadow effect was done and all the wash had dried, it was time to fill the empty space on the lower part of the wall. So I went over with two layers of the graphite chalk paint just so I would have a solid base color for all the other textures I'm going to add. And you're going to notice that I'm going to add this in a cross pattern application. And this is actually to enhance more of that lime wash effect. And you're going to see that I first was planning to make it look like this part of the wall that like gets in the foreground of the wood panel parts. But I noticed later on that I wasn't really a big fan of what it looked like. It was too stark and it didn't give me that nice transition that I actually wanted and it didn't really make sense. So I instead changed my mind and went for more of a cool transition look instead to add a textured gradient that went from all of these abstract textured parts that is slowly changing into these wooden panels. And this was something I was more happy with. This is something I could be pleased with and it made more sense. So it was a lot of a layering process, adding all of these gradients and textures. So I went over back and forth with the graphite chalk paint, a thicker consistency of the wall paint mixture that I had made earlier, sprayed some water onto the wall so it would be easier to distribute all the paint. And I also focused on adding less and less paint the further up the paint would go so it would have a nicer transition into all of those wooden parts. I also wanted more depth to this part because I felt like it was a little bit too bright and a little bit flat. So I went over with some of this black shock paint wash that I had and just dabbing it on the surface in random spots just to add a little bit more of a contrast. And I also focused the majority of this in the lower part of the wall so it would have a transition from darker to lighter tones but still being a bit random and more of an asymmetric look to it. I wanted to play around with different kind of textures, so I wanted to try out this effect of sort of like watercolor. So I first dabbed some of the paint onto the surface and then I went over with my spray bottle and sprayed it as close to the wall as possible so it would create the look of water running down that surface of the wall. So all of the paint that was still a little bit wet would actually start running down and give it some very interesting textures. And I did this effect with all the different types of paints that I had, so some of the black water some of the graphite chalk paint and some of the grayish brown wall paint that I had. And then to add even more interesting textures, I went over with an old toothbrush and wanted to make some of this spatter effect using the different kinds of paints that I had, the black, the brown and the graphite. I also wanted to include a little bit of this golden tints to this wall because I knew that I'm going to have some golden elements to the interior design in my bedroom. So I just used one of these Posca markers in this gold shade and I just pressed this marker onto the lid of a jar and then just sprayed a little bit of water there so it would be a watered down mixture of this gold and then I just started to add some spatters with this gold mixture and this gave a very nice subtle golden shine to some areas of the wall.
I still felt like there was something missing on the wooden part of this wall, so I thought that since I'm going to use these brass screws for the shelves that I'm going to add later, I came up with the idea to make some details that looks like old brass nails to these rustic looking wooden planks that I have on this wall. So I first added a round dot similar to the plug for my screw that I'm going to add later using the graphite shock paint. And I used the plug for the screw hole to know the height that I'm going to apply these details to so that I don't have to do any measurements using a ruler or anything. Then I went over with a slightly lighter tone of this graphite mixed in with, with this deep taupe that I have. Just to create sort of a highlight effect, gives more depth and realism to these nails. And then to get more of an inserted look of all these nails, I added sort of a slight highlight all the way around these holes, just to increase more of that depth and realism or 3D effect. But I still felt like the nails looked a little bit too flat, and a little bit monotone because the graphite actually dries much brighter than it actually is. So I decided to go over with some clear lacquer on top of all of these nail parts to get more of a depth and bring back more of the contrast. And then to give the illusion that these are brass nails instead of being iron nails, I used the same mixture that I did before when I did the golden spatter effect. And I just used a tiny brush and just painted over the nails with this golden wash to give the illusion that they are made of brass. And here you can see what the nail effect looks like just using the natural light sources that I have in the ceiling in my bedroom. And having this light is giving this reflection in the clear lacquer that I applied on top of the nails <laughs> that I created. And this really gives the illusion that you might think that there are real nails attached to this wall. But if I just go over with my finger on top of the surface, I can feel that it's all completely flat. But when you see this reflection on these parts where I painted the nails, it really looks like there are some real nails attached there. So that's the finished result of my bedroom wall. It's such a huge improvement and it really makes the transformation I gave my bed last year stand out so much better since it has a better contrast between the shade of the wall and the shade of the bed frame. And also it gives the bedroom more of a warmth and a cozy feeling with these deeper warm shades. And it really enhances those kind of dark cottage core, dark academia, a little bit gothic feel that I went for. So a more of a dark farmhouse interior, which is more the style that I'm going for now. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.